Wiesma Art Channel. My name is Ilkian Wiesma and today I'm going to talk about this painting and in the last tutorial I uh, had it in the background but it wasn't finished yet but it's now uh, finished. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a lot about the airbrush background and of course on the buffalo's face and especially on the fur because there was quite a lot of fur. And uh, this canvas is uh, 80 by 100 centimeters, so it's quite a big, uh, big canvas. Maybe you can tell because he has a very large head. Uh, I have a very large head, but his head is uh, is even bigger. And uh, yeah, it was a big, big canvas, so a lot of fur. And um, yeah, I thought first I thought I uh, would split this uh, tutorial up in two parts, just only the background and the buffalo itself. But then I uh, thought, yeah, I. I know from personal experience that I like to see the uh, start of a piece and also uh, the, the uh, finishing uh, up uh, portions of the piece. So therefore I uh, just included, uh, of, I stayed with, uh, with one tutorial of, about this whole painting. So this tutorial may end up uh, a little bit longer than, uh, than you used to, uh, uh, than I used to uh, uh, do my tutorials. But uh, yeah, well, like I said, I like to uh, start with the, uh, with the uh, start of the painting and also go away uh, across the, the finish line. But before I start the tutorial, I'd like to show you the airbrush I have and I hope you can see this quite well. I have a double action um, airbrush and I will come a little bit closer to the, ca to the camera. You have a single action airbrushes and double action airbrushes. I'm not an airbrush expert, but I like to uh, share a bit of information uh, about the airbrush uh, which I, uh, I know and uh, a few uh, of my own experience. But let's start with the single action. You may have heard um, about the single action airbrushes, but it is basically nothing more than that you can push the button and release it. You have no more um, abilities to change the airflow. So you have just one airflow, you push it, the air will come out of the airbrush and the, it will take your paint or water or whatever you have in here with it. But like I said, you can control the airflow. There's just one flow. With the double action, you can push it, you have air and you're supposed to have only air when you only push this button. So if you have paint coming out, that means your airbrush is, uh, is clogged, so you have to uh, clean it up. So uh, keep that in mind if you have the double action or you will purchase a double action in the future. Keep that in mind, it will be clogged if you push it and there is air and paint. But now this one is clean, so I don't think there will be uh, any uh, paint. So I push it, I have a little bit of airflow and if I pull like this, you pull the handle uh, towards me, I will get more and more paint. So if I uh, torch it a little bit, I have a little bit of paint, but I'm going way back. I have a lot of paint and a lot of air flowing. So in my case, I would go very quickly because there's uh, a lot of paint coming, uh, coming out of the airbrush. But yeah, this is basically it. This is this uh, double action. So you push it and you can pull it back. You pull it f uh, to the uh, tip again and then you release it. If you don't do that, if you do it like this, you will have, the next time you're going to airbrush, you, there is a bit of paint um, in the front on the needle. So if you push it again, you will have a, a lot of paint coming out. And that will leave you with quite some uh, spots on the canvas. And that is obviously not what you want, of course. So, uh, at least in my experience, I don't want that. And it can be quite hard to uh, get rid of, especially if you have uh, already some paint on the canvas. And you have a lot of spots there, you will try to and get it off with a um, clean tissue or something like that of a brush. Uh, I think you're also going to remove a bit of paint who, uh, who you have already uh, on your canvas. So if I have those trees here, I would have some splashes, some spots from uh, because I didn't pull it back. I uh, try to clean it, but I, it will take some paint off of the canvas because the airbrush paint is quite thin. And uh, I watered it out quite a lot because I don't have a lot of clogging going on. Uh, I have it like this. I'm sorry, here it is again. I don't have a lot of clogging in the um, point of the airbrush. But, um, so therefore I like to work in th uh, thin layers. But keep this in mind. It, is, it can be quite hard to uh, get some paint off of your canvas. And especially when you build up layers, you will probably uh, take off the under layers as well. 
would give the tip to, to practice on a separate piece of paper or uh, canvases so you can get a, a bit of a feeling and in this case of the airbrush how it works and I did that I tried to write my name and make those uh, dragon strokes I don't know if you know what a dragon stroke is but it is a um, stripe that uh, starts thick and then thin thinens out so uh, therefore you uh, can practice that and you will get some control of the airbrush and that is uh, very uh, handy when you for example uh, do those um, tree trunks and also the leaves you have uh, much more control on the thickness of those uh, tree trunks and on the trees itself especially of, uh, also on the trees itself and uh, so therefore I try to practice some it isn't that hard uh, if you do backgrounds if you do completely detailed work I don't do that but I think that is very hard with embers it is doable because of course but all those, uh, for example, little lines on fur, I just do it with a paintbrush and never with the airbrush. I'm not that a uh, experienced airbrushes, and I don't. Um, I like the airbrush, but not for those details. But um, if you only do those uh, out of focus details, it isn't that hard. It's just some practice, and it feels very strange in the beginning when you're holding the airbrush in comparison with a um, paintbrush. It is uh, obviously very different because you have to hold your finger like this and you have to get some control uh, of your finger and um, yeah it is just takes some getting used to but when it does it is uh, amazing you can uh, really make so so nice beautiful backgrounds and it will pull your subject your main subject just so much forward I really really like it so if you are considering the airbrush I suggest uh, you do it because it's, it's so amazing and like I said just practice and uh, you will get there. So there was a lot of information about the airbrush already. Uh, I never shared this on my, uh, my uh, channel so therefore I uh, just uh, would take the, time, take the time and explain a bit more about it. But now uh, let's get started over uh, uh, and starting painting and actually using this airbrush. And like usually I start with a solid background color and for this painting I just chose a very dark green color. It's a color that uh, is already in the background and therefore it's uh, quite handy just to paint over it. So if there are some spots who aren't uh, covered with some airbrush it is just the color who is already in, in the uh, picture in the painting later on so that doesn't matter that much and therefore I like to uh, choose a uh, color uh, who is already in the in the pixel like I said and most of the times I'm choosing a darker color because it will uh, for me it's uh, I found it a bit easier to work on a darker color and build my uh, colors up to the lightest colors and in a minute you will see me uh, using I'm starting with the white and I like to glaze over this later on and I'm doing that because the colors the green colors I will use in a minute are, are quite translucent so they won't show up on a very dark background so therefore I'm just laying in my of laying in my shapes my different shapes uh, with just only the white colors and then glaze over with uh, greens and browns uh, basically with the colors who are in the, in the background and I like this method it's a uh, quite easy it's just you, you have to get a bit used to, to the airbrush like I said in the, in the intro but it isn't that hard because uh, it will uh, give you that um, out of focus background uh, of out of focus background look very easily with the airbrush and now I'm still starting on the bison this uh, took the, a lot of time because all of the fur and uh, the background was uh, done quite quickly but this will uh, take much more time I'm just Starting with the eye because I like that. I like to have it um, to give it some some uh, yeah some life. I don't know, to, just to feel uh, closer uh, closer with the subject, and uh, therefore I like to uh, start with the uh, most of the times with the eyes and the nose and the mouth, and then uh, build from there. I just like that. You can also start uh, basically any color you like, but I like this. I like to have um, some life in already in the painting if that uh, makes sense, and I'm just. Starting in a layering texture with my brush, some fur texture, and I'm uh, trying to copy the direction very closely and also give the indication of clumps of fur. I'm not uh, very busy with individual hairs who are sticking out that will come later if needed, but, but this uh, for this um, painting that wasn't needed that much, but a lot of clumps of fur. and. Um, yeah, I just start out with the unblitz titanium white and glaze over that as um, much 
as needed and for some areas i need a few la layers and for some areas i need a lot of layers and sometimes you will lose some texture because i did um, my paint was a for example for example a bit too thick to layer but that doesn't matter i ha still have some texture and just building uh, up that layer again with uh, new fur strokes and starting layering layering again and it will happen sometimes of uh, for me at least it will uh, it happened uh, quite some often but it doesn't matter because i need a lot of texture there to give that uh, fluffy fur feeling and he had a lot of uh, fluffy fur around his uh, his face and in his neck and um, also on his back so therefore uh, it wasn't doesn't didn't matter that much if i uh, needed to, to redo some areas again and just like i said i'm just building up here i'm using a darker color to um, glaze so i uh, will uh, now create of i had created these shadow parts and i will build up and i'm uh, like i said uh, like to work from dark to light so i'm slowly building up my highlights and if i had to redo this or something like this painting i think i would start it out with m with even a, a much darker on the layer like uh, i'm doing here and I'm basically i uh, think i would fill in the whole bison with that color because as you can see now i needed a much darker color on his face and i um, thought in the beginning that i was dark enough with my underlays but it uh, appeared that i didn't uh, had those colors uh, dark enough so therefore yeah like i said i had to rebuild my fur a, a little bit it doesn't matter i uh, you, as you can see you see still some texture that is uh, very convenient so i leave it there but yeah like i said i could start much darker and it's just some experience i uh i um yeah i learned basically from this painting so if i do another painting i know now that i even can uh, start a much darker but for my uh, leopard painting i started too dark and i will have a card pop up uh, here as you can see it if you like because um if uh, you start too light and you need a lighter fur later on you have to um yeah it's quite hard to build up i just um needed much more fur texture back in that painting because i started too dark so for this painting i thought i don't w I want to start too dark because otherwise i have to repaint everything uh, quite a lot to get those lighter fur strokes in but this uh, animal hadn't that uh, light fur so therefore i needed a darker background i hope that makes sense but yeah sometimes it um it, it does need some experience to know which layer you should start out with but it doesn't matter because you can easily paint over it it's just some um yeah so a few yeah issues i it's maybe not a, the right word but that is something i um, do consider all the time when i'm starting a painting how dark will i start and most of the times i stick with a mid-tone and then uh through uh, halfway through the painting i realized i needed a much darker on the painting so i keep up uh, redoing the fur again but like i said it doesn't matter just take uh, a little bit more time than maybe was needed but yeah i like painting so it doesn't matter that much and you see me here bringing in some shadows again i lost the darker shadows again because of the layering but now it's much easier because there is some dark color underneath there so i don't have to fill it in uh, all again but just some spots here and there and that will make the contrast much bigger which will end up making the uh, painting much nicer to look at much more interesting because you have a lot going on there and uh, especially the lights and the dark portions are very very important I'm just trying to copy what I see and different shapes but I don't have to be exact on that but I want uh, a real big contrast i really like the contrast uh, in my painting so therefore i uh, i need to practice to go dark enough and light enough and it will get much easier over time of course and just on this uh, portion of his um, of this painting i just try to copy all the shapes and a uh, layer over my uh, different colors and that will give the feeling of a uh, complete piece because in the beginning it uh, it stands out too much 
for example for the fur are, are uh, different shapes but just glaze over it with color and it will get the feeling of a, a complete painting at the end this is build up and build up and this is the photo of the end painting and i'm really happy with this it's one of my favorites so thank you for watching i hope you like this tutorial like i said i it is a little bit longer than i normally do but i had so much information to share so uh, therefore um, i hope you like that if you don't i'm sorry my next tutorial will be probably be a bit shorter and uh, also of course you can also skip some parts if you don't like it but like i said i had uh, so much to tell and to talk about uh, this painting so therefore i took the time and if you like this, if you like my uh, tutorial or my other tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. And maybe you want to hit that bell button next to the sub, uh, subscribe button because next week I'm going to paint on something that I never did before. And actually I can talk about it a little bit, but it will be uh, painting on um, animal skin. Yeah, it sounds a bit creepy now i uh, pronouncing it like this, but it's... it's uh, it is not that creepy here, I promise you. It's very nice and I wouldn't do it if it wasn't uh, good for the animals, of course, or something like that. But this, um, yeah, it's the skin of the animal is used for a project and I'm painting on it. So I'm going to talk about it more in my next tutorial. So hit that uh, bell next to the subscribe button. And if you like, you can also follow me, uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, on Facebook and also on my own website. And like I said, you can subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like to this tutorial. So thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you at one of my other tutorials. Bye bye.